Eight Ways Narcissists Are Like Cult Leaders by Kim Saeed Narrated by Eva Gray People who have left relationships with narcissists often describe their experience as having been brainwashed. They reflect on their past with a sense of astonishment, disbelief and shock, recognising they did things and tolerated things they never thought they would. Many keep their experiences to themselves, believing others would find them naive, gullible and foolish. After all, who in their right mind would stay with someone who is abusive, unfaithful and deceitful? You might be surprised to learn that narcissists use the same mind control techniques that cult leaders use. And while mind control as a theory is largely rejected by the American Psychological Association, the concept of psychological manipulation has been written about by several prominent psychologists, including Robert Hare, George Simon and the late Harriet Breaker. Regardless of which term you use to describe the underhanded and deceptive practices employed by manipulative individuals, there's no denying that narcissists and cult leaders share many of the same techniques to pull their targets in, keep them under their hypnotic influence, and eventually destroy them. In this video, I list eight ways narcissists are like dangerous cult leaders. The Culture of Narcissism Contrary to popular belief, the concept of mind control doesn't imply that its target spontaneously loses all free will, mystically becoming a robot who is under the command of the narcissist or cult leader. Rather, mind control is a series of psychological manipulation techniques meant to gradually change the behaviour or perception of others through abusive, deceptive or underhanded tactics, as follows. 1. Building Rapport to establish rapport with potential victims, cult leaders know they need to match their target's non-verbal behaviour, leaning forward, carefully listening to their target's words, and intentionally using similar language. In so doing, cult leaders build rapport with their targets and hence increase their chances of collecting pertinent information to exploit their victims when recruiting them into their cult. It's often been noted that in the first stages of a relationship with a narcissist, or other low-empathy individual, it seemed he or she showed a genuine interest in their target. Narcissists and cult leaders alike take the time to scope out the characteristics and vulnerabilities of their potential victims. It further clarifies why narcissists seem overly sweet, polite and caring when first meeting them. Narcissists feign shared interests, emotions and experiences to project a sense of kinship, thereby fabricating the illusion that they are the soulmate of their targets, appearing to be an exact mirror of a potential new partner. Because narcissists don't possess a fundamental inner self, they mimic that of their potential supply. This explains how they can elicit a strong sense of attachment from their victims. Two. Love bombing. Love bombing is an attempt to influence a person by lavish demonstrations of attention and affection. It is a coordinated effort that involves long-term use of flattery, verbal seduction, affection and lots of attention to a target's intimate struggles with life. Love bombing, or the offer of instant companionship and unconditional love, is a deceptive ploy accounting for many successful recruitment drives within numerous cults. In a cult called Buddhafield, which disbanded around 2006, a former acolyte recounted how constantly your soul was being fed with love and inspiration and awe. Love bombing is likewise used by predatory narcissists in romantic or otherwise intimate relationships. Its purpose is to override the target's critical thinking skills so that the abuser can control and manipulate. Love is the most sought-after human need, so when a target receives an overwhelming amount of love and acceptance, it's very hard to analyse the reasons why, for fear of losing what they've desperately been longing for. In due course, the target becomes blindly dependent upon the manipulator, all while losing the capacity for rational thought. In relationships with narcissists, love bombing plays out in the form of intense, unrelenting calls and text messages, gifts, flowers, invites to meet the family, requests to move in together, and splashing their target social media site with cutesy, flirty messages, often within mere hours of having just met a potential source of a supply. 
3. Isolation Isolation is employed by cult leaders to isolate their followers from outsiders. This usually comes across as the cult leader's mission to protect the members of the group. In reality, he or she seeks to ensure that their followers only hear the cult leader's propaganda. In the Buddha field, members were instructed to detach from their families, to break the bond of family in order to bring them closer to the leader, who called himself Michel. Similarly, narcissists encourage isolation, to deprive their victims of social support, weaken their defences and cause their victims to depend on the narcissist. At first, seemingly innocent comments made by the narcissist may include, I get lonely when you're not here. I wish you would spend more time with me. I don't have a good feeling about your friend. Your sister doesn't seem to like me. These comments later turn into, Your friends are bitches and whores. You're a prostitute just like your sister. Everyone knows that you and your friends are trash. Are you having a lesbian relationship with your friend? These aggressive statements usually result in your withdrawing from your circle of friends. Or worse, you're beginning to believe there is some truth to them. This underhanded method of isolation is meant to take away any sources of support that might contribute to a target's attempt at independence when the relationship becomes toxic, which is inevitable in relationships with cult leaders and narcissists. 4. Playing the parent Psychological studies have shown that such things as tone of voice, mannerisms and other non-verbal behaviours play an important role in communication. Many women who've had a narcissistic partner report that their abuser dictated what they wore, who they could be friends with, if anyone, gave them a curfew, insisted they wear little to no makeup, sneered at them if they fixed their hair, and generally wanted them to appear unkempt. Female narcissists may insist on a particular unbecoming hairstyle for their partner, or make them feel they're clumsy and unrefined pointing out things like how they use their silverware or carry themselves in public. These requests are sometimes conveyed in a civil, diplomatic way. Other times the narcissist rages and shouts until their target acquiesces. What typically happens when someone talks to us as if they were our parent, in a fatherly or motherly tone of voice? Chances are it will affect our mindset, our sense of liking the person and our emotions. Manipulators are aware of these things and in an instant can transport another adult back to childhood with the associated emotions of wanting to please and feel loved and accepted. Robert Cialdini studied manipulators and he realised that they were doing things to control others' emotions. For example, create a sense of obligation in others, create a fear of loss or make people feel a sense of subservience to authority. Most targets are unaware that this is going on. This weapon of influence works outside of people's normal consciousness and makes this technique incredibly powerful. David Christopher, a former apostate of the Buddha field, compared his programming within the group as being no different than the typical programming one experiences in childhood. Your own family has a way of being, and you grow up in that programming, and there's a language that you use, and a lot of times your parents have an idea of what you should be, and if you want to have an independent thought that goes against that, you might be guilted or shamed because you're trying to go against the grain, Christopher continued. That is a cult. What I often tell people is, I joined a cult to escape a cult. The cult I left was my family. I left my not-so-good programming for a programming I thought was better. And it was better, much higher but then I had to leave that programming only to find my own authenticity and my own voice without anybody else's conditioning. For me, that's empowerment. 5. Opposition to independent thinking Many cultic groups frown upon members who show inclinations towards autonomous thinking. The thinking, so to say, has already been done for them by the cult leader. The appropriate response is simply to submit. Questioning the leader, or leaders, is seen as a sign of rebellion and stupidity. Likewise, failure to comply with a narcissist's point of view is considered an attack on their perceived superiority. Any time you voice concerns about their behaviours, 
you are considered problematic and you must make the necessary adjustments to pacify them. Narcissists don't care about the wants or needs of anyone but themselves and so naturally want you to believe you're not intelligent enough to make logical decisions. Anyone who criticises or questions them is considered an enemy and incapable of rational thought. Their use of humiliation and guilt is typically enough to instil feelings of cognitive dissonance and self-doubt in their targets. Common phrases used by a narcissist who opposes the independent thoughts of their target might include You are listening to the voices again. You lie to yourself and believe your own lies. Remember what happened last time we went with your idea? Or It's cute how you want to be as smart as me. 6. Sleep deprivation Getting regular restful sleep helps you stay focused and in control of yourself. Your body uses sleep to refresh areas of the brain that control mood and behaviour and to process the memories and knowledge that you gathered throughout the day. When a person is stripped of wholesome rest and severe fatigue sets in, they lose critical faculties and are more susceptible to the will of others due to the brain entering the theta state, which is the state most associated with hypnosis. This is a popular technique used by shady cops to coerce false confessions from an innocent person they want to charge with a crime. It's also why so many infamous cult leaders use sleep deprivation as a form of mind control, as it results in decreased ability to pay attention, react to signals, or remember new information, which encourages disorientation and vulnerability. Correspondingly, denying a partner sleep or starting arguments at a late hour is a common tactic of narcissists. It's often used in situations where the narcissist's victim has a high-stakes meeting or exam coming up, before important speeches or before an important job interview. Not only does depriving a partner of sleep result in their doubting their own judgement, it often sabotages the victim's goals of success, which gives the narcissist more ammunition to make their target feel worthless. 7. Fear and Intimidation Cult leadership is feared. Leaders will claim to have direct authority from God to control almost all aspects of its members' lives. Maintaining loyalty and obedience to the group is enforced by threatening soul, life or limb for negative thoughts, words or deeds. For example, a former member of Buddhafield was informed he would die within a year if he chose to leave the group. Guilt and character assassination are also used to control members of cults. Since cult leaders insist upon having cleansing sessions or confessions from their group members, they have intimate insight into members' deepest secrets and regretful choices. In this way, cult leaders can reinforce the need for salvation by exaggerating the sins of the former lifestyles, promoting acceptance of cult authority by promising redemption. In a similar fashion, former victims of narcissistic abuse often lament on how they confessed their deepest fears, desires and feelings of unworthiness to their narcissistic exes, only to have that sensitive information used against them during the devalue and discard phase of their relationship, as well as the smear campaign. 8. Fear, then relief, or hurt and rescue. This tactic preys on a person's emotions. Here the manipulator causes their target a great deal of stress or anxiety and then abruptly relieves that stress. Cult leaders use the fear of ostracisation to keep group members in check. The most common tactic used by the narcissist in this category is the silent treatment, which evokes their target's fear of abandonment. When the narcissist finally returns, the victim experiences a rush of euphoric relief. The silent treatment is executed by the narcissist when his or her victim attempts to establish a boundary or shows displeasure at something the narcissist says or does. This might include having another lover, a porn obsession, overspending, irresponsibility and or being mean to children in the household. Repeated cycles of fear and relief are emotionally exhausting. When the narcissist returns after numerous stints of the silent treatment, their victim is emotionally defenceless and more prone to accepting the unacceptable in order to avoid having their fear of abandonment triggered.
Further, this often leads to the victim pleading and apologising, begging for the narcissist to stay, even when the victim has done no wrong. The fear and relief cycle, along with trauma bonding and biological addiction, explains why emotional abuse victims experience cravings and obsessive thoughts once no contact has been executed. Emotional manipulation is abuse. The above examples are only a scratch on the surface of emotional manipulation techniques used by narcissists and cult leaders. If you constantly wonder about the status of your relationship, ruminate about what you could do differently, feel like the problems with your partner fall on your shoulders, constantly obsess about your relationship, are always fearful and anxious, and or feel like less of a person than before you met your partner, then it's highly likely you have been the victim of emotional manipulation. Narcissists know how to manipulate your vulnerabilities and sabotage anything that will alter the balance of power inside your relationship with them. Recovery from the psychological, emotional, mental and spiritual abuse of narcissism is imperative for you to put yourself and your life back together. Leave and deprogram. What you can do. The longer a target suffers through narcissistic abuse, the more they are programmed through psychological conditioning. Once you finally leave the narcissist, you will still feel chronically detached from yourself and your life for a time. You can even find yourself missing your abuser and feeling a lot of self-doubt because of that. In closing, I share six ways you can begin to deprogram yourself in order to regain self-trust and diminish self-doubt after narcissistic abuse. 1. Get into a counselling or recovery programme. Many communities offer free counselling in a group setting and sometimes they even offer free one-to-one -one counselling for victims of domestic abuse. 2. Tell yourself positive affirmations daily. Telling yourself what a smart, loving, beautiful and capable person that you are while looking in the mirror should eventually reprogram your thinking and help you feel good about yourself again. 3. Read self-help books about abuse recovery and finding the heart to trust your judgement. 4. Go with the flow of the healing process. Don't rush or be hard on yourself when you feel doubt creeping in. 5. Re-evaluate your needs in a partner. Make a list of the absolute must-haves and no ways and don't settle for anything less. Ask yourself if he, she exhibits those traits. 6. Focus on listening to your inner voice and keep it positive. This is a great time to incorporate positive affirmations. 7. Enroll in the essential no contact boot camp. Gain insight, proven tools and support to go no contact. Release the pain, fear and confusion. Learn more in the description box below. Learning the warning signs of psychological manipulation inside relationships with narcissists is very important. Empowering yourself to see the warning signs explained in this video can encourage you to overcome your fear of falling victim again. And of course, make sure you subscribe to this channel.